I love being the dumbest person in the room. I love being the dumbest person in the room. Well, congratulations, because you've absolutely nailed it. Is what I would have said a week ago before I heard one of the internet's biggest flat earthers, David Weiss, say this. So a bucket of Kentucky Fried Chicken is a better model of the Earth than the, than the globe. The globe isn't even a model, it's a toy. Now we will get back to Candy Sewings later on in this video, but for now we're going to concentrate on what happens when you take this man... Don't believe anything I say. ...and literally take him and place him in front of a class of high school science students. That actually happened recently with this man. We've got some of the footage today and it is truly, truly bizarre. But first of all, let's just remind ourselves about the power of science education. No matter how old you are, no matter what your ability is, education is always there and we can always learn and progress. Like the team of Flat Earthers over at Flat Zoe's Perspectives channel. Um, they've recently been using children's cartoons, remember, to ignite their passion for science education. So extremely hot that any ship would vaporize from the heat before it got anywhere near the sun's surface. Yeah. Oh, bless them. And I do believe they are doing really, really well. I've just been marking their latest homework. And as you can see here, uh, you know, the colouring inside the lines and everything, it's, it's beautiful to see. Now, having Flat Earthers in the classroom learning and progressing isn't a bad thing. But having them at the front of the class actually taking the lesson, well, that ain't so good. Uh, so let's begin here. This is David Weiss opening up his online lesson with a, a high school class of science students. And he does start, actually, to be fair, with a very appropriate question. First question I want to ask you guys is, how many how many of you think Flat Earth is stupid? <laughs> Raise your hand. <laughs> okay, good, good, good. Now, there's simply not enough hands in the world to raise to that question. And you might have noticed, I know it's quite darkened in the classroom, but all of the students uh, did put the hand up, which didn't seem to bother Dave, because he countered that with some kind of sanctimonious speech. Just listen to it yourself. Belief is the enemy of knowing. Belief is easy. You can believe that I'm nonsense and then leave this class and never think about it again. That's the least amount of effort you can do. But if you want to learn the truth, it takes time and effort and mental thought. You have to work out. You have to actually think. You don't have to just read something and say, okay, I got to memorize that for the test. You have to think about it, critically hold its feet to the fire and test it and repeat it. Yes, time, effort and mental thought. I am very convinced that Flat Earth Dave has heard all of those words in the past. I'm not quite sure he knows what they mean. An example of that would be uh, in Antarctica a couple of months ago where a group of Flat Earthers saw the 24-hour sun. It destroyed Flat Earth completely and Flat Earth Dave coped with that by trying to explain what they were actually seeing in the sky. It couldn't possibly be the sun. And he used all his time, effort and mental thought to come up with this nonsense. Um, so there's um, one of the technologies, this, this is called a dragon fire. Um, and it's, it, you can shoot energy up into the sky and c literally create a plasma ball. Um, and this is and, a trip. Yeah, this is, yeah. yeah so, yeah. so, so just seeing, seeing this stuff, I mean, if, if I cut out the background, you wouldn't know what you were looking at. If I said it was the sun, you would see the sun, right? Yeah. Look at this. Look at that. Doesn't that look a little bit like a sun? Doesn't that look like a beam, you know, with the sun? very strange mm -hmm. like if there was at different beams projecting this like these are very very strange sun flares this could be an extraterrestrial orb that we don't understand or this could just be another hoax with some directed energy a plasma ball being projected in the sky looks a little bit like a sun so if here's union glacier their camp is somewhere in here you could have one um location here and it, it beams the sun around this beam and then when it gets over here uh, there's a handoff to another projector. Now, the lesson itself involved Dave giving his usual flat earth presentation absolute nonsense, but it became very, very interesting at the end where it was question and answer time. And the students obviously were full of questions and Dave was also full of it in his answers. Check this question out from a student. I am going to repeat the questions that the students ask because their voice is quite low. So this student here is asking, what about meteorites? Where do meteorites come from? And the answer will blow your mind. Yeah. Where do meteorites come from? It is water above us. <laughs> yeah, so meteorites are interesting. Here is a, uh, um, a, a uh, this is a military, this was a leaked, leaked footage of them testing a, um, 
shooting, just shooting some basically firework things out of airplanes. And when you compare that to all of the shots that we see of meteors coming in, they look kind of exactly the same. Like, like these meteors are, you know, these are big meteors that we see. They're always, they're always caught on a, on a, um, dashboard cam in, uh, in, uh, in, in, uh, in a, um, so the first thing we've learned in Flat Earth Dave's science class is that meteorites are actually some kind of firework shot from planes. Who knew? Fantastic stuff. Now, question number two is a good question. Why is Earth the only planet that's flat when we can clearly see the others around? Let's see how Flat Earth Dave bullshits his way out of that one. If all the other planets, or like at least like the moon is a globe, why aren't we? Like, why is, are we special? Like, why are we yeah, so the only thing you've ever seen about planets is from two sources, and one of them is more credible than the other. The more credible source would be Dis Disney, and uh, the less credible source would be NASA. Okay, so step one of that answer is for Dave to pretend that nobody in the world owns their own telescope or is capable of going to an observatory or capable of taking any kind of photograph of planets whatsoever. And then the second step is to deliver his feelings on what those planets in the sky actually are. And I've never heard anything, anything more crazy than this. This is supposedly Jupiter, right? This is Jupiter, right? This is uh, a, just a uh, copy of a Van Gogh painting. This, these are paintings. Okay, so keeping a checklist, meteorites are fireworks shot from planes. Planets in the sky are paintings. What about the next question? And it's a good one. Why can we not see across large bodies of water? Why, why are there no cities or land masses on the other side? If the Earth is flat, then why can't we see across like the Great Lakes or like very large bodies of water like that? Yeah, great question. So the um, if I had a, if you and I were standing in front of each other and we had a um, a piece of glass in between us, um, you'd barely be able to see the piece of glass unless there's like a reflection on it. But if we stack three or five or ten pieces of glass, it would get harder to see each other. And after like a hundred panes of glass, we wouldn't be able to see each other, and you might not even be able to shine a light through it. It's called the attenuation of light. Okay, it makes sense. The atmosphere is now literally solid glass that we can breathe through and we, we don't know is there. It's just like an infinite, infinite number of solid planes of glass that stop us seeing over large bodies of water. However, when we look in the sky at the moon and the sun or planes that are vast distances away, we're allowed to see those because this magic, invisible, non-existent solid glass works in a different way when you look up as a... Fantastic. Anyway, next question. Um, you said that you didn't have any, like, scientific proof, uh, about, or, like, I guess backing to the sun theory, but there's been a lot of scientific proof backing that the sun is held up by gravity, so how would you disprove that? Now, this is a great question. If the audio was too low, she's basically said, look, you've got no evidence for the way the sun works on a flat earth, but there's plenty of scientific evidence supporting the heliocentric model. What are you going to say about that? And Flat Earth Dave answers this with what I can only describe as the classic Flat Earth 1-2. In the first part of his answer, he simply just denies that there is scientific evidence for the heliocentric model. Denial, of course, the number one tool in the Flat Earther's armour. And then in the second part of his answer, he jumps to the tried and tested method of asking somebody, essentially, can you pour water on a ball and make it stick? It is hilarious. And he puts his own twist on it. Quite an unexpected one. Check this out. If you had a globe, right? A model on your desk, a globe, right? Can you pour water on the outside? No, it won't stick. Can you stick a man or a, uh, a, a ship to the bottom of it? No, it won't stick. Can you contain air on the outside of it? No, there's no containment. But if we had a bucket of Kentucky Fried Chicken with mashed potatoes and gravy um, in a bucket with a plastic dome lid on it, um, can you float a cruise ship on there? Sure, right? Can you... Uh, can you contain air underneath the lid? Sure, right? Is the gravy contained from flowing outwards because of the walls on the side? Yeah, so a bucket of Kentucky Fried Chicken is a better model of the earth than the, than the globe. The globe isn't even a model, it's a toy. That's right, the Kentucky Fried Chicken Flat Earth model, uh, the truth of which is being hidden from us, of course, by them. Now, one of the students in the class does ask Dave who they are, and he obviously gets a very concise and clear answer. I'll play it for you now, and hopefully we'll all be far the wiser by the time he's finished speaking. Hey, Brady, who is they? <laughs> Great question. So they are the people that, uh, that, that well, the they for us are the people that... Um, 
that we see that uh you know but i don't think that they are the actual controls of the world those are the puppets that that um that um Brilliant. Clear as mud, Dave. Absolutely fantastic from Flat Earth's finest. I think it's time to get one last word from him before we move on. And here it is. Thanks. L last, last statement is don't believe anything I say. Now, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, what the actual chuff? How did Flat Earth Dave get himself placed in front of a bunch of actual uh, high school students in America during a proper science lesson? And I can only speculate, but I imagine this was some kind of learning experience for the students in the sense that they will get to hear him talk about whatever nonsense he wanted to talk about, and then they will go away afterwards and spend a few lessons looking at the actual real science and learning for themselves why he is so unbelievably wrong, as if it wasn't obvious in the first place. I would imagine that. However, if you check out the comments to Dave's video on YouTube, some people actually think it went well for him. Yeah, I loved it. Well done, Dave. You, you're so amazing. I really like the bit about the, uh, the mashed potato and the, and the cruise ship. I loved it too. That's the best presentation yet. Although, to be honest, that probably means that your others were but even worse than that one. So maybe that's not a compliment after all. Dave, 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 Dave. With your arguments about the, the meteorites coming from planes and, uh, you know, the infinite glass atmosphere, you're absolutely crushing the globe. I mean, how can anybody, anybody find any fault with anything you've just said there, Dave? Dave. Thanks, Dave. Hello, can I join in? That looked like a lot of fun making all that stuff up off the top of your head. I've got one. Um, The, uh, the sun is a portal. <laughs> how did I do? I really don't know why I'm typing this. Now, at this point in the video, I do have uh, an apology to make. There's something very serious I have to say. A couple of months ago, Jaron from the Jaronism channel and uh, some other celebrity YouTubers went down to Antarctica and they witnessed a 24-hour sun for themselves. They were met with backlash from the Flat Earth community that was saying that this was a fake trip. It was somehow filmed in front of some sort of studio or green screen or something. And I denied that. I said it was a it was a genuine trip that actually happened. However, I have seen a comment in a comment section backed up by video evidence um, that I cannot debunk. I'm going to need your help, but it has got me questioning the authenticity of the entire trip. And it's based on this video here with Jaron riding his bike through the snow in Antarctica. Sure, when you look at it, it looks genuine. But then when you see a comment like we're about to see, it's very, very, very difficult to uh, to unsee that comment, shall we say. So if you can help me debunk what he says here, um, and restore my faith in the final experiment trip, I will be over the moon. But right now, I am doubting its authenticity because of this. Here we go. Yeah, check this out. You can clearly see the LED screens when he's bicking. That's why he's bicking so wobbly. He's bicking on LED screens. There we go. Final experiment debunked. Never happened. Bye-bye. So there we go. Silly me. I didn't recognise the wobbly bicking when I looked at that first time around. Uh, maybe I need to educate myself like this lady did. I love being the dumbest person in the room. I love being the dumbest person in the room. Well, you've got some stiff competition for that. So a bucket of Kentucky Fried Chicken is a better model of the earth than the, than the globe. Now, Candice Owen is an example of a conspiracy theorist that embraces education, and she has done a lot with it. Only last year, she was on the Bill Maher show, and she showed herself up a little bit by not realizing that there was more than one trip to the moon. People did land on the moon. I don't know. Okay, there we go. I don't know. I, I do know. I just want to know why we didn't go back. We did go back. What, did we go back? What year? To the moon? We, we people on the moon? Yeah. Okay. But Candice didn't let that dishearten her. And like any good student, she realized she had to identify what her weak spots were before she could then um, strengthen them and move forward. What we have is what Scott Adams refers to as the non-expert problem. So your gut tells you like, Sounds pretty crazy that we went to the moon all these times for a couple of years and then we just didn't go back forever and we were just like done. Like that sounds weird. And where's the technology? And they didn't even have cell phones. And like you're telling me this, they live streamed this and there was a phone call. I don't know. Like it just seems like a little weird for like 1969. But you're like, but I don't really understand kind of outer space. Yeah. So I'm not going to debate this, but my gut tells me this is all BS. That was where I was. And so to overcome this problem, the first thing Candice did was go on the search for resources that could help her fill the gaps in her knowledge. And I know there's a book too, A Funny Thing Happened on the Way to the Moon, and it, he just broke down the science in a way 
that was very digestible. So I didn't have a non-expert problem. So she read a book called A Funny Thing Happened on the Way to the Moon, which actually isn't a book. It's a documentary that she read. Or maybe she just looked at the words on the front cover. I don't know. But she did something. And then she interviewed the man himself, Bart Subrell. And you could see the gears in motion. You could see her, her grasp on reality beginning to change. Perhaps not in the way she might have hoped, but still, something was happening. If the base assumptions are wrong, right? If you are telling everybody that, you know, the Earth's a globe, or you're telling everybody that E equals MC squared, whatever the base assumption is that you establish, if everyone's working off of that and saying, well, this is now concrete, this is consensus, this is a fact, then you're actually putting a ceiling on science. And 12 months later, after this intensive education, she's no longer the, the naive individual who once said this. Oh. I just want to know why we didn't go back. No, not at all. She has grown and she's changed into an even dumber version of herself, who now says this. Um, I was just walking with Savannah, my manager, because yeah. we do like these little evening walks, and just looked up to her and I was like, dinosaurs, that seems pretty fake and gay. Ladies and gentlemen, the power of education. See you next week.